and if you guys have any questions, and then uh, they'll play a few songs. All right, and then we'll see you all tonight at the theater at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Right. Thank you. You know, something Jason said is very exciting, and I, and I agree with him about the future of the Elvis tribute artist world. I think it is less about imitating Elvis, even though I want to see the hologram of Elvis, right? Yeah. To me, that's what the truth. When I first saw Cody, I never it was my first Elvis week. I wasn't an ETA or anything like that. I see this guy walk on the stage, and I looked at one of my best friends sitting next to me. I go, well, there's Elvis. He wasn't trying to be Elvis. It was just I, I got to see the hologram of him, you know, because it's always just been this flat screen image, and there's this full 360 thing. And, and you know, you, you have this, this, these people that have, I'm, I'm, we're all such huge fans of Elvis Presley. And the more tribute artists I got to know, they study. And where was his finger here? Where, what was his foot doing here? And how did he do do that note? And it's incredible to, to watch the guys like like Cody and, and the guys that have committed so much to bringing back in 360 in hologram mode this guy that we're such huge fans of, right? So it's going to be really exciting to see this. But more importantly, I've seen the videos of Elvis. I've already seen it. It's great. I watch it all the time. Now what I want to see is what did Elvis build? He built all of us. He built anything you hear musically. In my opinion, Elvis was the foundation and the construction workers that put all that together. And so what did that spin off into? And what did it influence? And we see that with guys like Cody and these guys that are so great at what they do. The ultimate winners that we, that we come here every Elvis week and watch and see compete. So it's not about... I'm Elvis, or I want to be like Elvis, or these guys are trying to be Elvis. It's, hey, this is what Elvis did for us. He's been gone so long, too long he's been gone, and yet it's still, every day you see this performance from somebody new giving you, here's my interpretation. That's what's going to be exciting about this show. It's set in modern day time, but to give you the essence, this is what it's like in 1956. And I would just recommend today when you're at home, get on your iPhone, your computer, whatever. Uh, Apple's paying me to do that, so I'll have to appreciate it. Uh, and, and just listen to all the songs, like the top 10 songs from 1954 and 1955. And then listen to an Elvis record and go, wow, where, where did that come from, right? So that's all right, Mama, which, you know, by the way, was cut just not too far from here. And something Cody and I were talking about a little earlier, this gives me goosebumps to think about it. Right here, in this location, I need Memphis Jones here preaching for you, but mm -hmm. right here, this little kid walked in and was looking at the clothes. Man, I'd love to have that. Couldn't afford anything, of course. And Lansky gave him something. Gave him a shirt that he liked. Elvis Presley, in this spot, right here at the Hard Rock Cafe, where this is right now, Elvis Presley, this was Lansky's, the original Lansky's, where he bought his clothes. And here in a minute, we're going to see how good looking he looked, because, again, you're going to see the best image of Elvis we've seen in this industry ever. But first, we're going to start with the band. And, and, and David, come on up here, David Fontana. I want, I, want, I want you to introduce David Fontana, ladies and gentlemen. Wade Bernard, Eddie Watson, and Steve C. You guys come on up. Now, you know, I don't know what it was like for you growing up being D DJ Fontana's son. Anybody ever heard of DJ Fontana? Yeah. You, 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 you may have heard Jailhouse Rock, Little Record, did, did, was kind of successful, Hound Dog. Yeah. That's his dad playing that drum. You know? and, and we have had the unbelievable privilege to get to know your father. And, and to this day, we talk about it all the time, every time I see him, I go, where's DJ Fontana? There he is, and, I, and I, this is kind of weird, but I look at his hands, I think that, that, was, that, you know, that, that was the guy playing the drums, and he's as sweet as he is legendary, which is awesome. I've had pasta that he made for me, I'm proud to say that, and he's got the original drum kit that he played with Elvis at his house upstairs, and I told him, I said, DJ, let me get that drum set out of way, he'll have all that extra room, but he didn't buy any, but what I wanted to talk about, he still has the... The bass drum, what would you call it? Head? Front the front end of the, of, the, of the cow skin that you see on, on the, the Ed Sullivan show that you see on Millboro. And you got this in this production. We tell us a little bit about how that happened? Yeah, um, 
you know, doing the Elvis 56 thing, we're trying to do everything as authentic as possible with upright bass over here, Scotty Moore guitar amp. And uh, so just thinking about it, and I thought, well, let me see about getting that hit. So a gentleman in Nashville named Sam Bacco redid Dad's drums probably 10 years ago and made that hit. So I went to Sam and said, I'd like to have one of them. <coughs> so he made it for me, and uh, you will see that tonight at the show. It's, it sits there right on that. And I've got uh, my first set of drums when I was 10 years old. It's about a 1962 set of Gretsch. Dad's drums are a 1953 set of Gretsch. So it's it's along the same lines. They you know they're old drums, and I God, it's probably been 25 years since I've even gotten them out of the closet. You know they're they're like my babies. I just pack them up and don't touch them. You know, and then so we got this head on there, and it looks really good. It's it's pretty neat. I, I'm real happy with it. So. Yeah. He showed me a picture of it, and I mean I got to be honest, I'm so nervous almost because it's, I don't know emotionally what I'm going to feel when I see this incredible image, this hologram 